<sighs> I'm hungry. Let's try to get through this quickly, okay? Uh, so April is National Poetry Month, um, and typically during this month, there's a 30-30 uh, writing challenge that a lot of poets do where they write a poem each day in April. I, there's no way I was going to commit to doing that because I am not in a, I'm not in the headspace to be writing. I haven't been in a headspace to write for like a while now, and I'm not about to force myself to do that. However, I do have multiple unread, not even multiple. I have a lot of unread well these are now read I had a lot of unread poetry books you know so I figured you know what why not try to read and poetry books are typically not that long so I was like you know what why not try to read a poetry book a day I'm not doing anything but watching tv all day anyway so let's not do that maybe and spend a little time reading a book so yeah so that's what I've been doing for the past couple months, I haven't been able to read a book every single day, but I have gotten most days done. So I just wanted to, you know, kind of go through the books that I've read so far and give like a quick, you know, how I felt about it, what I got from it. Um, yeah. So the first book I started off with was Night Sky and Exit Night Sky with Exit Wounds by Ocean Vong. Um, I started off with this one because I, had, I was already halfway through it. I started reading it who knows how many months ago and I only had like half of the book left. So I was like, you know what? Day one, let's just finish the book that we've already started. And um, what can I say about this that hasn't already been said? Powerful use of language, beautiful, interesting uses of language, as well as the command of structure in each poem and throughout the book. That's something that's been really like, I don't know, tickling my fancy as I've been reading these books is, is the command of structure in an individual poem as well as in a collection of poems, throughout the collection of poems. Um, that has really been standing out to me and that's something that's definitely in this book. Um, yeah, and when I, as I'm reading this book, I'm kind of thinking in terms of what am I taking from it as a writer, as well as what is some material I can use to teach. And if I'm doing something on, you know, how to create interesting, beautiful, poetic uses of language, so I would definitely come here for, you know, a reference, as well as, you know, what are different ways we can use structure? How can you enjambment? That's the real key I'm using for it. The enjambment in here is, is, is phenomenal. Um, and, you know, that's something that I would use to teach. Um, if I were to, you know, select poems, if I was looking to teach, you know, a lesson on structure and jamming, line breaks, blah, 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 this is definitely something I would pull from. Um, so after I finished reading this, I just organized the books by publication date. Um, mostly a lot of these books are from 2015, 2014, and 2016, because that's the, you know, when I was really heavily on my poetry shit, buying books, not reading them, so I guess not too heavy on my poetry shit, but I was at everything, buying everybody's books. Um, and then I had to stop myself because I was accumulating more books than I was reading. The, the next book after Oceans I read was, I guess the oldest one out of this collection, um, Shake Loose My Skin by Sonia Sanchez. This one was, this one is copyrighted for 1999. Um, I was four, I was five. 1999 actually I have a picture of myself this is what I looked like when this book came out <laughs> isn't that funny anyway uh so yeah the next book was Shake Loose My Skin by Sonia Sanchez Sonia Sanchez is from the first poet laureate at Philadelphia so you know I have that um communal connection here I guess um as well as this is just you know Sonia Sanchez like that's a you know noted name in poetry outside of Philadelphia as well um, but this book is a collection it, it has uh, works from her other books her previous books as well as some new works so yeah there's stuff from I've been a woman there's stuff from homegrown hand grenades this book also has one of my favorite poems poem number is it poem number eight poem number three because um, if you know anything about me you know that the majority of my personality is contrived from first of all the miseducation of Lauren Hill and second of all the movie Love Jones and this poem Nina in the movie says um i gather up each sound you left behind and stretch them on our bed each night i breathe you and become high so what else what else do i need to say about it the next book that i read was human animal by human animal a project what is it a project for future children by banu kapil 
Uh, this is something that was assigned for a poetry class in college, probably maybe my junior year. You know, which I only say because this is not something that I would have picked up myself. If you'll, you'll probably notice throughout the rest of my books is I pretty much only read stuff. I've only bought stuff from black writers. Um, this is not a black person. This is uh, by Nukapil, I believe is Indian. Um, and this book, let me just read what it is. Um, this work is based upon the true story of Kamala and Amala, two girls found living with wolves in Bengal, India in 1920. So that's, you know, that's a very interesting story. It's a very interesting concept. It's very much um, research-based poetry, which I'm not sure if the other stuff I've read is. So yeah, it does stand out from the rest of the books I've read. But again, I would say this is not something I would have picked up on my own. And this is also something I'm on a fence about if I want to keep in my library. It was an interesting read, but I don't know. Um, yeah, but that's this one. Um, I will say that the book I read, after, the book I tried to read after this one, um, was another book that was assigned for the same class. I'm not going to say the name because I don't want to, you know talk about books that I didn't like but like three pages in I was so I was just disinterested I didn't know what he, the writer was talking about and I didn't care enough to continue on and it was also just you know it wasn't a book that I picked up myself so I was like I don't have to keep reading this if I don't want to you know I decided not to read that book I didn't have another book on me I wasn't at home so you know I ended up getting drunk when I got back home I was telling my roommate like damn I didn't get my book in today and she threw this at me um, a quick, nice, short read. I think it was like very much end of the day. I was drunk. I was curled up on my, on her couch, reading this book, drunk, trying to get my book in for the day. But this is In the House of My Father by Hiwa Adelo, another book written by a friend. It's a friend of both of ours, my roommate and I. Um, and I'm so glad that I read this. Honestly, I'm so glad that I read this drunk on my couch. That's so perfect. I'm glad that I read this instead of that other book because... You know, that's the homie and also ugh, the writing, the writing in that he would is just another book that has a command of um, structure and form in a poem. In the individual poems and in the entire collection, you could see the cohesiveness of the command of form. If that makes any sense, I'm not sure if that is that translating well from my brain to my mouth, but anyway. Um, yeah, it was a good read. It was nice and short and quick and easy to get through, um, while also still being powerful and telling, again, that word cohesive, telling a co cohesive story. Um, yeah, so I, what else, another thing that I'm learning a lot about some of these books is how to put a collection together. Because some of these people, it's not just the writing in the book, it's how you, how you string the whole, you know, the whole situation together. Um... So yeah, let me just, when was this, when was this published? This one, so this one took me out of my, you know, organization by copyright. Um, this one, what copyrighted is for 2018, but that was the next book I read. It was kind of like an audible. My roommate threw me an audible and um, it was a great decision. The next book I read was Pepper Seed by Malika Booker. Um, I bought this book in Jamaica. Um, my organization, the Philly Pigeon, we hosted a retreat in Jamaica during the Calabash Festival, which is a big literary festival um, down there. Um, and I think Malika Booker was reading at one of the events that I went to. I really liked her stuff. I don't think I'd heard of her before. So I went in to the, the they were selling books from the writers that were featured, you know, in the festival. And I picked her up. I think I picked up some other people too. Um, that I just haven't gotten to, but, um, uh, Great Read, another one th where the structure is, stick the structure in each poem, the use of enjambment, the use of, you know, line breaks and stuff, um, the cohesiveness between the structures used in each poem is sticking out to me, um, this is a, she, and also just her use of, like, colloquial language, even though it's not my colloquial language, I'm African American, um, she's she's writing in like a Caribbean uh, like a Caribbean colloquial language that even though I'm not Caribbean is still very accessible to me and understandable to me. I might think I think maybe just on the tip of us being black and those things you know kind of I don't want to say being universal but you know diasporic. After that one, I read "Monks Eats an Afro." "Monk Eats an Afro" by Yolanda Wisher, another more poet. 
another former poet laureate of Philadelphia. I also know Yolanda personally. I've had the pleasure of being in a lot of her workshops, being in conversation with her often, and just someone whose work, you know, is beautiful and resonates with me for multiple reasons. Um, yeah, I finally got around to reading her book. It's actually a shame that I've, you know, haven't read it sooner. This is copyright for, let's see. This is copyright 2014. But yeah, things that Yolanda Wisher does has a, has a masterful command of musicality and capturing a, a era, I think, of music and musicality in poetry. Can't go wrong. So the next book I've read was Black Movie by Denez Smith. Uh, this one's copywritten for, I want to say 2015. Yep, 2015. Um, it deals very heavily with uh, police brutality, black death, you know, the traumatic experience of being black in America. Um, not my favorite of Denez's work. I've read Insert Boy as well. I don't know if I've read anything other than Insert Boy. I feel like I read, I feel like I've read another one of their books besides Insert Boy. I don't know. The two other books that I think I've read of, of Denez's I've liked better than this. Um, maybe just because of the, you know, the content, the, not the content, the, um, you know, the heaviness maybe of this one. The next book I read is Hand Buzz and Other Voices, poems by Karen Lee Nielsen. This is the only book, I think, in this whole array that's by a white person. Um, and this is another book that was purchased, not for a class, but because of a class. I believe the assignment that we had was to go to Philalalia, Philalalia, which was like this chat book convention festival that would happen on Temple's campus every year. Um, and for a class, our assignment was to like go there, buy a chat book from one of the small presses. Um, oh, it's like a small press festival, I believe. Well, yeah, we had to buy a chat book from one of the small presses and we had some assignment, you know, with the book. Clearly I didn't do it. That's why it's on my, in my stack of unread books. But I picked this up because I believe it sounded very interesting. It's poems that are written, um, by and about the experiences like this. The writer is a hearing person who was raised by two, um, deaf people. And the poems are kind of about that experience. And I thought that was pretty interesting, which is why I, I picked it up. Um, and as I read through it, yeah, it was good work. Another very strong command of form. I was actually surprised by how connected, not connected, but how much I enjoyed this white writer, especially. Oh, I know why I was so pleasantly surprised. Because before I read this book, I had another book that I lost interest in in a couple of pages, um, written by a black man. And I wasn't connecting with him. And then I picked up this book by this, you know, middle-aged white woman. And I connected with her more. So that was interesting to me. <laughs> black men talk a lot. That's all I'm going to say. Um, speaking of black men, the book I'm about to read next is The Crown Ain't Worth Much by Hanif Willis Abdurraqib. Um, another person that I, I won't say I know, but I kind, I'm familiar with um, his work. I've seen him perform many a time. We've had him at the philly pigeon featuring i've loved his stuff you know vocally um so i've picked up his book this is another this is a person who pumps out a book twice a year and i just want to know how how i can't keep up with you bro i can't keep up with even purchasing your books let alone like trying to write books i'm interested to get into it i've already started it but then my eyes wonky i don't know if you guys can tell my pupil is dilated it's been dilated for almost 24 hours now so I had to stop reading it the other day because I couldn't see anymore. Um, but I'm excited to pick this back up, finish it, and, you know, maybe talk more about it in my next video. So this is what I have left. Aside from that book, I have this stack left. There's a... Uh, how many days left in April? So today's April 18th. I've gotten through... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In eighteen in eighteen days, I've read eight books. Am I doing bad? That's about half of the days. I can't be held to a daily standard, and I'm not gonna, you know, punish myself for that. But I still have this stack of books to get through. I guess eighteen. I have about, you know, a little over ten days. And it's one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, I have more books than days left in April for sure. But 
something is better than nothing. Um, I'll come back at the end of the month to talk about the you know next chunk of books that I read. Maybe I'll get through all of them. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll keep this going until May. Maybe I'll keep this going into the rest of my life. But probably not. Bye.